Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to this week's episode of the Writer's Corner. As always, this is your host, Anthony Avina. I am here with yet another reading of Void. If you are listening to this on the day it's released, you know that we are one day away from the release of Void. Um, As I'm recording this, uh, I am recording this a week before Void releases, but for those of you listening, it should be Wednesday the 30th, and we are just one day away from the widespread release of Void. Um, If you guys don't know what Void is, it is a contemporary romance drama that is set in modern day Los Angeles, and follows six friends who are each undergoing some sort of tragedy or heartache, or problem in their lives that is crippling, almost. And together, they have to find a way to overcome these obstacles so that they can find happiness, hope, and maybe even love once more. So, so far, I've done two readings of this book, and today we are going to read Chapter 5. Uh, this chapter deals with one of my favorite characters that I wrote in this story, Jasper Collins. Uh, Jasper, is, his struggle is uh, his sexuality. Um, not a problem with the sexuality so much as a problem with people coming to terms with his sexuality. Um, he uh, is gay and a proud member of the gay community. Uh, However, he comes from a religious family, uh, a super uh, strict religious family. His father is a pastor, and he grew up with uh, the, you know, the teachings of a man who believes that uh, homosexuality is a sin. So his struggle in this story is finding a way to finally admit to his parents who he really is, uh, he is stressed about this. He's upset about it because he knows what's going to happen once he tells them. And he's dreading it. So, we will talk more after this chapter is read. But I wanted to give you guys a little backstory and I will address you guys uh, about some things coming up um, afterwards. But for now, here it is Chapter 5 of my novella, Void. Here we go. Jasper Collins arrived at his apartment in Los Angeles to find his answering machine flashing red, and his heart fell into the pit of his stomach. For months, Jasper had known that one day he would come home, see the answering machine was blinking, and would get the dreaded message from his parents. There had been some close calls in the months between then and now, but thus far his parents hadn't ventured into the territory Jasper was so afraid to venture into. However, after the evening he'd just been through, having to bite his tongue as Michelle covered up her abuse and his friend Javier struggling to move on from Elaine's death, he knew the day had come. Walking over to the machine, he reluctantly pushed the button on the device and the dreaded message began to play. Jasper, this is your father. Your mother and I haven't seen you in months, and we believe it's time for you to visit. Your mother will be making a nice dinner on Sunday, and I believe it would be wise for you to attend. Please call her and let her know you'll be coming. God bless you, son. His father's voice grated against his spine, sending dark tendrils of fear and annoyance running into his mind. His worst fears were realized. His father... Reverend Timothy Collins, leader of Our Lady of Sorrows Church in the small town of Rancho Cucamonga, California, was calling his son home, and no matter how independent and confident Jasper was, he knew he would obey. His mother, Emily Collins, was a lovely woman in her late forties, who faithfully obeyed her husband, whom she believed to be her direct line to God himself. Fear crept into Jasper's body and mind, but not for the typical fear of an overbearing and religious household most young people have. No, his biggest fear stemmed from the fact that he knew he would have to do what he would have to do at the family dinner. He'd been planning it for months now, and he knew he couldn't hide it from it any longer. 
When he saw his father and mother on Sunday, he would finally have the courage to tell them he was proudly gay, now and forever. He dreaded the encounter not because he was ashamed of his sexuality, for he had battled that shame years earlier and was finally getting the courage to be himself. His friends already suspected his sexual orientation. Javier and Pamela surely knew, and Michelle comprehended that he was gay. No, he feared the dinner with his parents because he knew that it would be the end of his family forever. Growing up in an extremely religious household, Jasper had learned to hide who he was at an early age. Countless times he had to hold his tongue and repress the urge to be himself, especially when his father adamantly spoke out against homosexuality and condemned anyone who was gay to an eternity in hell. While some modern religious folks had learned to embrace people's sexuality for what it was, his father clung to the old ways of his religion, and his mother followed his lead. He'd always had a problem with his father. They disagreed on everything, from religion and politics to music and career paths for Jasper. He'd always loved his mother, however. No matter how blind she was to who Jasper was and how much she worshipped his father, Jasper had always been able to bond with his mother and he wanted to believe she'd have his back when he came out to his parents. However, he realistically knew that his father's grip on her was too strong, and when he came out, he would not only lose his relationship with his father, but his mother as well. Knowing he had to face this inevitable confrontation and finally get it to a place in his life where he could be himself, he listened to the message over and over, desperate to find a clue to his parents' mentality and thoughts hidden within the simple message his father had left. Unable to find one, he instead began his nightly routine, washing up and getting ready for bed. By the time his head hit the pillows on his mattress and he had shut off all the lights in his room, scenarios for how the family dinner would go ran through his head. And in every scenario, his family shunned him, and he lost the only parents he had ever known. And that is it, guys. That is the end of chapter 5. Uh, the next chapter is going to be chapter 6, where we talk about Julian and Brienne, uh, who are a married couple who are going through some pretty big struggles in their ma marriage. Um, i got to say, chapter 5 was one of my favorites to write as an introduction to these characters. I really feel strongly about um, you know shining a light on the LGBT community, on giving them a voice, and uh, showcasing that, you know, we're all just people. We all are here to find love, no matter who or what orientation you are. Um, I truly believe that. We're all equals, and uh, the sooner we realize that, I think the better off this society will be. So, I wanted to write this character to, you know, give everyone in this world a voice. Uh, you know, a voice that says, you know, I'm proud of who I am, I love who I love, and that doesn't change the good person that I am. So, that is why I wrote this character, and I hope you guys will join me in following his and the rest of the character's journey throughout this novella. As I said before, if you're listening to this on the day I upload it, It'll be Wednesday, September 30th, which means it is one day away from the release of Void. If you haven't already, go join uh, our launch party that is going to be happening on Facebook. It's an online launch event. I am currently in the phase of planning some things, whether it be blog posts, videos, pictures, uh, giveaways, and more. And uh, I really would love it if you guys could join us. So go follow me on Facebook, uh, author Anthony Avina. And on there you'll see an event planned for the release day, which is October 1st. Uh, I am still planning, but right now I am thinking I'm going to be giving away at, at most nine copies of the electronic uh, ebook format, uh, Avoid. And I also have one print copy that I will personally sign and write a little message to whoever wins the print copy. So... That is my uh, goal right now. That is uh, what I'm planning. And I want to say thank you to everyone who listened to this podcast today. It means a lot to me. Um, 
I am so excited for this release. I am also in the process of writing several short stories and a couple novels. Um, so I am always busy, always have new stories coming up. Um, I am mostly known as a horror writer, but this is my first foray into the drama and contemporary romance genres. And I'm very passionate about this. So um, for those of you who are listening right now, I want to thank you for all your support, whether it be here on YouTube, on any of my other social media feeds, or the podcasts on SoundCloud or iTunes. You guys are awesome, and if you guys would like to hear me answer some questions about the book, about my writing, about me in general, or about any other topic, make sure you leave them in the reviews of the podcast or in the comments section of this video. Uh, feel free to send me your questions on any uh, social media network. And I'll be happy to answer them, and I'll also put them in a video. So make sure you guys stay tuned for some incredible things in the weeks to come after the release as well, because I have a lot planned, and I want you guys to come with me on this journey as we explore all that can possibly happen with Void. Thank you guys so much for listening, and I will see you next week for a brand new episode of the Writer's Corner Podcast. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Long days and pleasant nights, my friends.